But what was their investment? Uh, that they knew historically, because they're psychics or whatever you want to call them. There's paintings in China from a thousand years ago of people with, uh, with a Dick Tracy wristwatch, or you call it an iPhone, people talking on little devices in their hands <laughs> a thousand years ago. So they saw what, what the 21st and 22nd century was going to be, which would be the, the real turning point of human history, the 21st century. This is the century where everything gets something totally different. And now for something completely different. Right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so they wanted to have a stake in there, uh, the elders, the, uh, the elite of China. So they, and the oligarchs always plan pretty far ahead. And the Chinese are pretty good at this. So they knew that you couldn't stop the fact that America was going to become the powerhouse it did. And also so much technology and everything comes out of, out of America. They probably figured out that little thing in the, in the guy's hand a thousand years ago. They said, geez, that's a Steve Jobs product. <laughs> Wait for Steve to show up. We'll stick with Steve. So, okay, so they had this, you know, amazing vast vision. So they sat out all the turmoil in Europe you know, the religious wars, the industrial wars, uh, the civil wars, the, the First World War and Second World War, they basically sit it out. <laughs> Why get involved? And, and, they're, and they're pretty locked in as a potential owner of the prize, it, that being America. So what happened at the time of Theodore Roosevelt, which is, you know, 1900, he becomes president around then? Yes. Is that that was the first crisis financially. And so what happens is all that wilderness that the Sierra Club uh, preserves, all that wilderness in America, that was handed over to China. So when you're going through parks in the United States, you're going through property owned by China, which was the first uh, collapse with the Roosevelt administration. Financially, they didn't have anything. And it turns out that America was pretty weak in the big level. It's only a new country, too. It was pretty way weaker than Americans realized. So here they are, vulnerable in 1900. So they have to turn over a lot of their land as collateral. Okay. Then the next crisis happens in the 30s with the global economic collapse due to radio and electric environments, which were eventually, which were basically free information, where everybody could get stuff for free and not have to buy it. And if I gave out information, I could keep it and you could have it. It's not like I give you an apple and you eat it, and then I don't have an apple. Right, so right, right. the whole electronic software communism that came in with the radio era screwed up the meaning of money. And that's why money became public property in the 30s, known as welfare states, or socialist states, or the New Deal, or fascist states, or communist states. That's money as public property. It's not owned by the oligarchs anymore. Okay, so in this crisis of confusion for the American bankers, China saves them. So China gets its further hooks on America through the uh, Federal Reserve notes and the gold deal that was set up by Roosevelt. Now note that the son, or whatever he was, relative of Teddy, um, he's now going to do the next phase. He's going to scarf up all the gold and put it away someplace in Fort Knox. ARA, you know about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look up Nassara. Now you listen to that, that topic and I am talking about it. And who is the key figure? In the Nassara information, I'll tell you, it's Hillary Clinton. And why is it Hillary Clinton? Because her father was the one fully aware of the Chinese dominance in the 60s, 70s, the hidden ground of America. And then a side thing, McLuhan said in the 60s that China was the hidden ground. Very interesting that he would say that. What did he know? Anyway, I didn't have a chance to check him out on that. But he said China was the hidden ground. And he had sociological reasons for saying that. So here is Hillary Clinton's father, coming out of Chicago, knows the obligations of a, the American economic system to China, and they need money again. Because there was a gold crisis in 1968. There was a currency crisis. Talk to a guy like Sherman Skolnick, he'll tell you about this. There was a crisis in 68 in the world economy, and America was vulnerable again. So Nixon had to go to... China with his hat, you know, his hat in his hand, begging. Okay, what can you help? What can you do for us? Uh, you know, we're going to give, we'll give you this. I'll give you my Frank Sinatra record collection. You know, or the Rat Pat record, all this great culture I'll give you. 
So that's why Nixon, he went there ostensibly to open China to us. No, he went there with hat in his hand and in trouble. And the, the person who was the in-between the fixer of this relationship was Hillary Clinton's father. Which means that Hillary Clinton is going to be pretty close to being a president someday because she's already part of the hidden, hidden circle. <laughs>